Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're going to do the real review for the iPhone 10. Now I'm going to try to make this video as quick as I can so let's get right into it. First things first, let me answer the main question everybody been asking me all week. If I had to choose between the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 8 Plus, which one would I rather get? Well, in my personal opinion, I'd rather go with the iPhone 8 Plus. And I give you five good reasons why. Number one, the price. 64 gigs versus 64 gigs with the iPhone 8 Plus, you're looking at 800 bucks. With the iPhone 10, you're looking at 1,000 bucks. So that's major savings, 200 bucks. If you got $1,000 to spend on the phone, why not get the iPhone 8 Plus, take the leftover money, and get yourself a matching Apple Watch to go with it. Complete the combo. Number two, the look. Look-wise, I like the look of the iPhone 8 Plus better. Now, I'm not a fan of the vertical camera, and I'm definitely not a fan of the LeBron James hairline on the front. I just like the look of the 8 Plus better. Number three, fingerprint sensor. Now, you do have some benefits with the facial unlock on the iPhone 10, but the fingerprint sensor is just way faster and way more reliable, and it's easier to get to when your phone is on the table. We'll talk more about that in a second. Number four, the width of the phone. Now, even though the iPhone 10 has a longer display with the narrow aspect ratio, the width on the iPhone 8 Plus is a lot better. I got big fat fingers, ladies. So it's easier for me to text. So I prefer the width with the extra screen real estate. And number five, battery life. Now, if you look on paper, the iPhone 10 has a bigger battery, so you would think that it's gonna get better battery life. But in real world usage, that's not the case. And part of the reason is, now you got an OLED display versus LCD. Now I'm gonna give y'all a perfect example. Let me open up both of these real quick. I took these both off the charger at four o'clock PM. Now it's already what, two o'clock in the morning? Let's take a look at battery life. Now I've been using these phones all day long, both of them pretty much equal. I would say I almost use the iPhone 8 Plus a little bit more. With the iPhone 10, I got 31% battery left. With the iPhone 8 Plus, I got 62. That's a major difference in battery. Both of them I rock on max brightness and both of them with heavy use. And like I said, I actually use the iPhone 8 Plus a little bit more because I had it in the gym and I watched the whole Wednesday night fights. So battery life, better on the 8 Plus. Now, with that being said, do I still like the iPhone 10? And the answer is, of course I do. Now, just like any other phone that I review, there's always going to be some things that I don't like. So let's talk about those first and then we'll get into everything that I do like. Number one, this is my don't like list, the price. Now, if you bought this phone, the 256 gig version, you paid about 1200 bucks. Now, y'all know I gotta say this one time, the price is too get damn high. And you spell that G-A-T, get damn high. That's kind of ridiculous, all right? I'm not co-signing for no $1,000 phones and a $1,200 phone, that's ridiculous. Especially in this day and age, we're talking about 2017, you got the G6, you got the OnePlus 5, Moto X4, even the Essential phone. All of these phones are $500 and under. They all got dual cameras. Some of them got wireless charge. Some of them are water resistant. Basically, they can pretty much do everything that the iPhone can do, and some of them can actually do more for half the price. So there's no reason that you're charging $1,200 on the phone and it doesn't even come with the fast charge adapter. We'll talk about that in a second. But the price is too goddamn high. Next, no expandable memory. Now, 256 gigs, that's a lot of memory, that's cool. But if you bought the 64 gig version, you're gonna need some more memory, especially on a phone that shoots 4K video, 60 frames a second, which is amazing. But that eats up a lot of battery, and if you're into uh, downloading a lot of apps, you'll, you'll see how fast 64 gigs will disappear. Now, for me, if I'm spending a thousand bucks, I think that the minimum gigage should have been 128. All right, so Apple, the next phone, the minimum gigage for a thousand bucks got to be 128. Now, 256 gigs, you could probably uh, get away with that, but I like to have my micro SD cards in my pocket, swap them in and out. So no expandable memory. Next, no headphone jack. Now, not the biggest deal in the world, but for me, that's kind of a big deal because I use my phone in the car with the auxiliary cable. Then I'm also using it in the office. I'm using it at the gym. I'm going different places. I got headphones stashed all over the city. Y'all seen that picture I posted on the gram the other day. I went to a meeting. I only had my 
iPhone and I have my Google Pixel and both of those phones don't have headphone jacks and I have my wired headphones. So no headphone jacks, that's, that's not a big deal, but you're gonna have to walk around with that little uh, USB, uh, little lightning adapter dongle. Once you lose that, then you're looking at 20 bucks for the official one, don't buy the $10 one, I tried that one, you're gonna have problems with that. Buy the $20 official one if you lose the stock one, but still, that's money coming out of your pocket. So no headphone jack. Now look, I would understand if headphone jacks have become obsolete, then you know who would care? But if you go out right now and buy a set of audio file headphones, you're gonna see that they come with a headphone uh, cable. All right, so everything ain't about Bluetooth these days. If you want good sound quality, you're gonna need that cable. Next, no fingerprint sensor. Now I am a fan of the face unlock, but you see like with most Android phones, let's use the Galaxy Note 8 for an example. Once they got rid of the fingerprint sensor on the front and the home button, they threw it on the back. Right, and it's not intrusive, it's right there. So this way you have options. Now the face unlock, it does work pretty good, it's not perfect, but I like to have the option of having a fingerprint sensor. And if, you had, if you're used to Apple phones, you're gonna miss that fingerprint sensor on the front and you're gonna miss that home button. Now on the side note, I thought Apple was kinda silly for coming out with an iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and the 10. But after using the 10, and then using the 8 Plus, using these back and forth, it all makes sense now. Some people don't like change, including me. Now, I've been rocking with these iPhones since 2007. I was one of those douchebags camped out in front of the uh, Apple store in 2007, drinking a cafe latte. So I've been using these phones for about 10 years. They got you trained with the home button, they got you trained with the bezels, and you got used to it. So some people don't like change. So now I understand why Apple came out with the 8 Plus, for the people that don't like change, and the iPhone 10 for people that want something different. But I'd rather have a fingerprint sensor and facial unlock. Why do I have to choose between one or the other? Galaxy Note 8, perfect example. Fingerprint sensor and face unlock. Next, fast charging. Now this is some greedy bullshit that Apple pulled. They are selling you a phone for 1200 bucks with fast charging capabilities, but they're not selling you the fast charger with the phone. Now go online, look at bestbuy.com. If you wanna buy the fast charger, you're looking at 80 bucks. That is crazy. Now any phone that I got, all these Androids and Blackberries, whatever phone that, I, that you can name, if it has fast charging, it comes with the fast charging brick. Why do you have to buy that separate? That's kinda whack. Now 1200 bucks for this phone, I would be able to co-sign that if it came with the fast charging brick and it came with a set of AirPods. That would be a pretty good deal. But they didn't do that. All right, so that's a major L. Next, no multitasking. Now let me show you what multitasking is because a lot of people say, oh, you got multitasking on your iPhone, you just go like this. Say I'm going to Waze, you open up Waze, then you double tap, then you open up your email, double tap, go back to Waze. That's not multitasking. All right, let me show you what multitasking is. All right, let's pull up the Galaxy Note 8. This is multitasking. Let me watch some Injustice videos and shop on Amazon now, at the same time. All right, at the same time. No switching back and forth. And I'm watching a YouTube video and I'm shopping, checking out the Black Friday deals. That's multitasking. So if you're charging a thousand bucks, now look, this is not limited to Galaxy Note 8. Anybody that has Android with the Oreo update, you got split screen multitasking. Uh, now look, on the side note, I know a lot of people are gonna say, why are you always comparing iPhones to Android phones? It's not about trying to see which one is better. The whole purpose of a review is you getting ready to spend your hard on $1,000 or $1,200. bucks. you got to know that there's options out there. All right? Now, I don't have a horse in the race. I don't care. I like all of these phones, but I'm trying to help you make your decision. So if you think multitasking is, is a gimmick, wait until you try it. All right? Wait until you try it. Wait until you're watching some YouTube videos, you're shopping at the same time, checking your emails, doing two things at the same time. For a phone of this price, that should be a stock feature. Next, now this is the thing that I hate the most about this iPhone 10, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 7, iOS 11. Now look, I, like I said, I've been rocking with iOS since I, what, iOS 3, maybe the first one, maybe some beta shit. Ever since they updated to iOS 11, I've never had so many problems with an iPhone yet. Now y'all see right now, I don't know if um, y'all still having that problem, but I'm having it with the question mark issues. Everybody's the joker now. Every time you leave a comment on, on a page, you the joker. The question mark issues, the lag, the force closes. Now when I say lag, I don't, I don't mean that Android lag, not, the, not that kind of stutter lag, but I mean the force closes. 
That's so annoying when you open up your phone and you go to your app. Let's say you want to click on Facebook. You rock on Facebook and you scroll and all of a sudden it just force close. Or all of a sudden you get that little dial. Your phone resets. Ever since I got iOS 11 and I had all of the latest updates, they've been super buggy. Now for a thousand bucks, Apple, y'all should have made sure that that software was up to date before y'all released it. I want y'all release it. Once you get a bug, you got to stay on top of that. All right, so I don't like that. Now, look, I know they're going to, uh, I know a lot of y'all going to say, oh, it's not Apple's fault. Not. Look, I'm the consumer. All right, I'm, allow I'm allowed to bitch about this stuff because I spent a thousand bucks on this phone. So I want it to work. And that's part of the reason why you buy an iPhone. You want that smooth iOS experience that you come to know and love. iOS 11, it's not delivering that. Now, y'all know I got to be petty. They call me Petty Roosevelt. So there's a few petty things that I don't like. And when I say petty, that means that it's not a deal breaker, but it's things I got to mention. Number one, no NFC. Now, a lot of people have Android phones with NFC and still don't use it. So that's cool. But, uh, you know, if you like me and you got a lot of Bluetooth speakers and headphones that have NFC pairing capabilities, you're going to want NFC in your phone. It's so much easier to pair your phone and transfer speakers or let somebody else use, your, use the speaker then come back to it. NFC is a must for me. And I still got those NFC tags in my office. So as soon as I walk into work, I got an NFC tag on the side of my desk. I just place it on my phone and it's automatically going to put my phone in office mode. That means it's going to turn the brightness down because I'm underneath bright lights. It's going to turn on my Wi-Fi, connect to the office Wi-Fi. It's going to turn my notifications down. It's going to put it in office mode without doing anything, just tapping the NFC tag. All right, now I did a video for that. It's called Samsung Tech Tiles. If y'all don't remember that, go check that out. Shameless plug. Next, no always on display. Now, this is kind of a big deal for me. I always use my phones on a dock. I, any phone that I got, including the iPhone, I got it on the desktop dock. So when your phone is on the dock like this, you're not going to know what time it is. You're not going to know what notifications you got until you get a notification and that ambient light will light up. Otherwise, it's going to look like this. So now when you want to know the time, you got to physically go to your phone and touch it. Now, if you got always on display, like on your Galaxy, your LG V30, basically any uh, Android phone with the Oreo update, you got your phone on the dock. All you got to do is glance over. Now, I can see I got messages, Facebooks. I can see the time and the date. And if you got a Galaxy phone, you got even more information. Fully functional. All right, so no always on display. Next, no customization. Now, this is a part of the thing that I always hated about iPhones. Everybody's iPhone looks the same. Once you open it up, you see a full page of apps. You just got all your apps. Now they do have widgets, but all your widgets is right here. What happens if I want to move one of my favorites widgets to the front or to my main home screen page? So as soon as I unlock the phone, it's right there. I just want to see that. Or I want to swipe and have it on the second page. You can't customize it. Everybody's iPhone looks the same. Not to mention, you can't just have a big app like... It's hard to explain if you don't have Android phones. Let me give you a quick example. Though. Let me give you a quick example. <laughs> you see on my Android phone, you see I got my home page. That's a widget. Then I got more widgets right here. I can have my widgets as many as I want in whatever order I want. Now, here's the thing. If you know anybody that has an Android phone, say you meet 10 people with Galaxy Notes. Once they open up their phone and they go to their home screen, you're going to notice that everybody's home screen looks different. Everybody's. Y'all see I got the big clock. That's not the stock clock. Everybody's home screen looks different. When you're rocking with iPhone, they tend to stick with this one size fits all kind of theme. And I don't like that. Not to mention, there's no app drawer. Like, I might not want to have all my apps on display like this. You know, say you got your Tinder, you want to be on the low. You want to have that tucked away in your app drawer. You don't want to have it on Front Street. So no customization. Next, this is another thing. You still can't clear all your apps. All right, now, once I got all my apps open and I want to get rid of them, say I long press on this one. Now, I could just hit that button and delete them or I could use the two, three finger swipe. But if I had 20 apps open, that's a lot of swiping. When you got your Android phones, let me give you an example of what, what I mean by clear all your apps. All I got to do is hit that one button. There's all my apps disappear. All right, so little stuff like that is, yeah, I know it's petty, but if you're coming from Android to iOS, you're going to miss that stuff. Next, no home screen rotation. Now, this is a, this is specific with the iPhone 10 because with your iPhone 8, uh, your yeah, iPhone 8 Plus, I like to use my phone in the car on a mount. So now, if you want it to look more sleek, you don't want to look like an Uber driver. 
you got it on your mount like this, you want to have it in landscape mode, it automatically rotates. That is a huge feature for me. If you got one of those car mounts that, that looks sleek, this will fit right in. I'll show you a video in a second. Kind of looks like a TV when I'm riding around at night. That's beautiful. Then when I go back to my home screen, everything works in landscape. When you got your iPhone 10, see, look, when you got your iPhone 10, let's do the face unlock again. iPhone 10. Ah, I forgot to swipe. <laughs> no rotation. Still in the learning process on this. No rotation. All right, so I know that's petty, but I don't like that. And the last petty thing that I don't like is for 1200 bucks. you mean to tell me they only came out with two colors? Now, Apple might try that greedy shit again and come out with a red phone later and force you to sell this on to get the red one. But I think for 1200 bucks, they should have came out with at least minimum four color choices. Let me get gold. Let me get silver. Let me get jet black. And let me get a red or a blue, something different. So this way, when you get to that restaurant and everybody got their iPhone 10s, everybody want to be the top dog, you don't got 10 people with the same iPhone color. And I've already went out right now and everybody got this color. I don't know why this one is so popular. If I would have known, I would have got the black one. Everybody got this one. So now you got to go out and get your skin or get your case if you want to look a little bit unique. And that's pretty much it for everything that I don't like. Now let's get into everything that I do like, which is a lot of stuff. Now I know I'll be ranting if y'all see my stream last night, there's a lot of things that I don't like about every product. That doesn't mean I don't like it. This is, is this phone gonna be in my rotation? Of course, I actually love this phone and that's part of the reason why when I get a new phone, I don't do a real review three, four days later, I gotta really learn the phone. Because if I would've did this video three, four days ago, I would've told you I hated this phone. But after using it, a lot of the stuff that you're not going to like out of the box, it will grow on you. And that's why I didn't even mention it in my do not like list. All right, so let's get into the things that I do like. Number one, the build quality. Now, you just spent 1000 to 1200 bucks on this phone. That's going to hurt. But when you get home and you open this up and you take it out of the box and you actually feel it, that's the lubrication right there. That's going to ease your pain. The build quality on this is A1. All right, it's excellent. Now, I hear a lot of people saying that the stainless steel sides make it look cheap. Y'all got to hold this in your hand for yourself. This is the best, the most premium feeling iPhone to date. Now, if you hold this and the iPhone 8 side by side, this one is a lot heavier. Now, if y'all remember, I was kind of bitching about the LG V30 being a little bit too lightweight. That kind of gave it a cheapy feel. This one feels premium. All right, so you spend 1200 bucks. At least it's going to feel like a $1,200 phone. Build quality on this, excellent. Next, let's talk about water resistance. That's a major plus for me. Now, even though the summertime is over, I'm still going to be outside all year round. Once it starts snowing, I want to shoot the 4K video, diving in the snow in slow motion. Now you got a phone that's weatherproof. That's a major plus. My bad, I was accidentally dialing a number. Anyway, so now the phone is water resistant, major plus. Next wireless charge now people think that's a gimmick but it's really not if you got yourself a nice desktop charger put it on your charger and wirelessly charge your phone now of course wireless charge is not as fast as regular charge but say you at work or say you at home and you got a desktop charger like this if you at work for eight hours you don't care about fast charge you just want to keep using your phone all day on and off without having to keep plugging it in it's a convenience all right so when you look at wireless charge look at it as a convenience Next, face unlock. Now the face unlock on this, last week I was ready to say it was kind of suspect until I realized that there's two settings. And let me show you the settings real quick. Go to, go to your settings, right? <laughs> if you're having a problem with face unlock, go to your settings and go to accessibility. All right, let's find that real quick. Go to accessibility and go to your face ID and attention. Now, I really didn't pay attention to this when I first got it. I had both of these on. All right, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that off. But if you got face, uh, require attention for face ID, basically what that means is you gotta look at the phone. You gotta have your eyes open and look into these cameras in order for it to open. Now that's for if you want more security. Now the problem with that is if you're trying to glance at your phone and open it, it's not gonna open, it's gonna be buggy. Once you turn that off, it's more it's more free. It's just going to open up easy. Now, fellas, ladies, if you got a nosy significant other, then you're going to want to leave attention on. So this way, in order for somebody to open the phone, they got to be physically looking at it. 
Now, if you're sleeping, they're not going to be able to do that unless they hit you with the Bill Cosby or fellas, if your girl work at the doctor's office and she got her hands on some Rohypnol, then you're in trouble. But for day-to-day -day usage, leave this off unless you want maximum security. So anyway, Face ID. Face ID does work nice and fast. I just got to look at it. Now, I'm trying to do this from behind the camera. Let me look at it. You see, it does work fast. Let me, let, I'm, I'm gonna pay attention and do this the right way. So say I pick up my phone. This is another feature that's new on the iPhone. You see when it's on the table, if I just tap it, it activates the display. Now, if you got your iPhone 8 Plus, you tap it, nothing. So this is kind of cool when you wanna check your notifications. You could just tap it and it'll turn on if I had notifications. Now let's hit the face unlock. You just swipe and look at it. So face unlock on this is a go. Is it better than the Galaxy Note 8 or the Pixel XL? I would say it's even. In my opinion, the best face unlock on the game right now goes to the LG V30. The LG V30 got the face unlock on lock. <laughs> face unlock on lock, if you know what I mean. All right, but face unlock on this, it's a major go. Next, the display. Now, this is the reason why you're buying this iPhone 10, the display. Instead of uh, LCD, now you got the AMOLED panels, and look at the difference. It's clearly visible. This one looks more like anybody that had Samsung phones. You come to know these bright, vivid colors and the blacks look extra black. Now look, if you use the black wallpaper, you're not gonna see the LeBron James hairline. Now once you open up an app, then you will see it pretty visible. But if you're using black wallpaper, you're not gonna see that. Now one thing I did wanna point out, check out this Essential phone. This is what I like about the Essential phone, even though I hate this phone. The reason I hate it is because I paid 700. If I paid 500, I wouldn't be so harsh on this. But look at the difference. This is how an edge to edge panel is supposed to look. You see how they did it right around the camera like that? I wish Apple would have found a way to just do it like this. Even if I had two humps, I'd rather have that than the uh, big giant hairline on the front. But it is what it is. The display on this phone is beautiful. Now it will eat your battery up if you use it on max brightness, but if you pay a thousand to twelve hundred bucks, why do you have your phone on so dim that you can barely see it? Put that brightness up and enjoy your phone. Next, let's talk about the gestures. Again, now I was ready to say I didn't like the gestures because I didn't get used to them. But once you get used to them, the gestures is kind of even faster than using your home button to swipe out of a nap. And once you pick up your phone, let's do that again. <laughs> once you pick up your phone, you can just start swiping over and go to your recently used apps. Now, one thing that I didn't like about this, I'll show you real quick, hold on, I'm getting too many emails. One thing I didn't like about this, say you swipe over, right? Now I can swipe over, I can swipe back. But once I swipe over and I let go and I start interacting with this, now I can't swipe back anymore. So everything starts, this automatically becomes the last page. Didn't like that at first, but again, it's a learning curve. Once you get used to it, you're gonna like the gestures, they're just gonna have to take a uh, you, you, you're just gonna have to take a minute to get used to them. All right, I got tongue tied. Next, the speakers. Now, this is another reason why you're buying this phone. Some of the best speakers on the game. Let me pull up a video real quick. All right, so let's check out this video right here. Got a little Marvel. You hit play. Listen to the speakers. Now you can pitch this out to go full screen. The display is beautiful and the speakers sound crystal clear. Now look at this. Cover the bottom, you still hear it. Cover the top, you still hear it. So you got dual speakers. Now one of the things, let me pause this. One of the things I love about this phone is you notice that you can't even see the dual speakers. So when you're holding it like this, take the Razer phone for example, you don't need to have two big giant speakers in the front to achieve that same sound. These are some of the best sounding speakers you're gonna hear. All right, so speakers made you go. Next, the camera. Now, if you notice, when I was talking about the things that I didn't like, I never said anything about no pro mode on the camera because this is one of those phones that you're not gonna need the pro mode. Now, on your Android phones, a lot of times you have problems with oversaturated pictures, so you go into pro mode and you, you'll tweak the settings a little bit. This is a point and shoot dream right here. All right, you point and shoot, the pictures come out beautiful. Look at this. Beautiful pictures. You're talking about 4K video, 60 frames per second. Let me pull up a video real quick. Check this out. Now listen to the sound too. 4K, 60 frames per second. Beautiful sound. 
The camera on this phone is amazing. You see what I was saying with the dock in the car? I like to have it in landscape mode. This way it looks like a TV. Camera on this phone, nothing to complain about. Now you do got portrait mode. Let me talk about that in a second. You got portrait mode. Now if y'all look at my Instagram, I posted that picture of Xerxes. The portrait mode on this, <laughs> it's out of this world. Now the only downside to it is the front facing portrait mode. It's not as good as the Google Pixel XL. And I would say even the Galaxy is a little bit better. But maybe that's something they could do with a software update because you remember when the original portrait mode came out on the, what was it, the 6 Plus or the 7? I forgot which one. When they first came out with portrait mode, it was a little bit shaky. Then they updated and it got a lot better. Same thing with this one. Portrait mode is a go, but the front facing one is a little, little iffy. But overall, camera on this, 4K video, 60 frames per second. You know, I don't think there's an Android phone that could do that right now. None that I have. This is the one right here. All right, so the camera on this, through the roof, A1. Next, battery life. Now, I was complaining about battery life, but you gotta remember, I'm one of them dudes that always got my phone on damn near max brightness. You could get a good day's worth of battery out of this, just turn the damn brightness down. All right, so battery life, I'm not gonna complain too much. I've used this for a whole day, and you do got your battery saver right there. You put it in power save mode, so you can easily get through a whole day. So battery life, nothing to really complain about. But like I said, I did get better battery life with the iPhone 8 Plus, but you're taking a hit with the display. So you gotta make that choice. Do you want this beautiful OLED display or do you want the old school LCD with a little bit more battery life? Your choice. Next, the processor. Now we're not gonna get into the specs, the A11 Bionic and all that stuff. Basically the processor on this is what you come to know and love from any iPhone. It's super fast. All right, the process on this is fast, no hiccups. The hiccups that you get are from iOS 11. All right, it's not from the actual phone because when I have my 7, before I update it, it was running super smooth. Once I update it, then I noticed a few hiccups. So it's not the processor, it's the actual OS. So I can't really complain on this. You see no stutters, no lag. Gets the job done. All right, you can open your apps and close them real fast. Swipe on the bottom. Everything works. All right, so the process on this is a go. Next, let's talk about the lag factor. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being a Galaxy S2 from back in the days, mad lag, and one and zero being no lag at all, I would put this for the lag factor at about a one. Now, if they can iron out iOS 11, this could be a lag-free beast right here. Now, if y'all notice, y'all might think that I'm swiping wrong, but I try to take the screen protector off earlier and I put it back on, I'm, I'm losing some screen responsivity -ness. But there's no lag on this phone, just take my word on that. All right, no lag. You might see a little stutter here and there, but like I said, I think that's iOS 11. Next, Animojis. Now the Animojis, they cool, but the only downside to the Animojis, let me pull them up real quick. Now my main complaint with the Animojis is you basically don't have enough to choose from. Now you see I'm talking. It's actually following my face right now. I'm sh let me shake my head. Let's, let's, let's close my eyes. Open them back up, smile. The Animojis, this is a lot of fun and it's real cute. But the thing is, since you only have 12, the novelty is gonna wear off quick. Because you, you know, you say you got your friend that has an iPhone and y'all going back and forth with the Animojis. Okay, you did the monkey, you did the cat, you did the dog, the alien, you did the piece of shit, or the, uh, <laughs> if you want to, the ice cream shake. I think that's a milkshake. What well, we call it a piece of shit. You did all, you did the panda, you did the chicken, gobble, gobble. After a while now, it's like, all right, what else? What else? So the novelty is going to wear off real quick. It is a lot of fun. I've been using it, been trolling my daughter with it every day. But I just think that they need to add some more and that's gonna be a software update because they basically got the cameras on deck already. Just add some more Animojis. So I do like the Animojis, but the novelty is gonna wear off kind of quick. But it's fun, you gotta try it and play with it for yourself. If you go on Instagram, there's a lot of animate, uh, Animoji memes. Next, iMessage. Now for me, iMessage is my favorite messaging app throughout any phone platform. Now, people that got Android phones, shout out to the Samsung Knights. I know everybody's gonna say, oh, use WhatsApp or use Textra or use this app, use that app. There's nothing better than stock iMessage, especially when you're going from one iPhone to the next. So when somebody texts me a random number and I see that little iMessage on the bottom, 
I know that it's on. So now I can use all my iMessage screens. Oh, this ain't even an iPhone. Let me pull up an iPhone number real quick. Let's see, um, here we go. So now <laughs> I can pull up an iMessage screen. So say I wanna say hi, right? I hold that down. Now I got my different effects. So you see you got invisible. I can send it invisible ink, gentle, loud, slam, and you got different screens. Now echo, this is part of the new update. I like that, you got the echo feature. You got your spotlight. You got your balloons, your confetti. This is perfect for the happy birthday text. My favorite one, the inflatable heart. You got your, your laser show. The fireworks, this one is pretty dope too. I'll show, I'll show you that one right now. Shooting star. And this one like some kind of lava explosion. That's kind of dope. But check this out. Now, let me turn the volume on. Say I want to send this message. Watch how it's going to pop up on the person's iPhone. You could feel the phone vibrating and they're going to hear it. So that same thing that you've seen is going to go back to regular. That same scene that you just seen, that's how they're going to receive it on their phone iMessage is the truth, all right? That's my favorite messaging app. Next, let's talk about the floss factor, all right? Now, if y'all don't know what the floss factor is, that means you go somewhere, somebody got an essential phone, somebody got a Moto, somebody got an LG, somebody got an iPhone, somebody got a Galaxy, somebody got a Pixel, any phone that you could think of, you out and they got that phone and you got your iPhone 10. where do you fit in on the food chain? Are you at the top or are you at the bottom looking like a peasant? Well, with the iPhone 10, needless to say, this is probably the number one phone out right now. It's the hardest phone to get. I right, just on back order. You you waiting what a month for delivery? Once people see this vertical camera, and I think that's why Apple did that, in my personal opinion, because there's really no no benefit to that. I think they just did that so this way, when you got three iPhone cats sitting at Starbucks drinking that latte, we we can all know who's who. All right, we know this is one. He don't got no portrait mode. File him to the side. He wanted to save a couple of dollars. Maybe he liked the big screen. That's cool. But when you see the vertical camera, that means you are on top of the food chain. You got the big boy, the iPhone 10. Everybody knows you just spent a thousand to twelve hundred bucks. You're a baller. Now look, I know some people are gonna say, "Oh, who cares? You know, you, the phone don't define you and all that." Hey, look, man. Look, I don't make the rules. I right? don't hate the player. Hate the game. All right? I don't make the rules. Now look, you go to work. You work hard every day. You want people to know that you living good. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Enjoy it. Buy your iPhone 10. Let everybody know you're on top of the food chain. Let's get a little wipe down. This is a go. And last but not least, accessories. Now I will I will do a couple of more case videos, maybe about three or four, maybe five, who knows. But buying an iPhone 10, you're not gonna have a shortage of accessories. Now that's the, now think about that for a second. You gotta keep that in mind. If you're gonna keep this phone for two years, you don't wanna just buy one clear case and rock that every day. You go out and you buy a phone like the Pixel XL, or you buy this Essential phone, go online and look for cases. The Pixel does have a few cases on deck. The Essential might have one or two. Go on Amazon and put an iPhone 10 case, and you're gonna be scrolling for days. And I like that. And the companies know that this is the number one phone out right now. This is the most trendy phone, the biggest seller. So every case company, every manufacturer is gonna have some Apple iPhone accessories, and especially for the 10. So no shortage of accessories. I already did a couple of case videos. Like I said, I'll do some more and I'll show y'all a few more accessories. Anyway, that's my full review of the iPhone X on a scale of one to 10. This phone is a major, major, major go. Everything that I didn't like about it, I don't like. But my likes outweigh my dislikes. So this phone is definitely gonna be in my rotation. I'm gonna be using this heavy. I might not even use a case too much but we'll see now a lot of people is asking me did this get scratched up from taking all those cases on and off as you can see no scratches but I did actually drop the phone so let me see if y'all can see that I did drop it so you see I got a little ding right there so I did a little a little ding on the top but otherwise it still looks brand new hit me up in the comments let me know what y'all think about this shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook Foursquare Twitter Google Plus Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Foxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. And a special shout out 
to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I'll see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock won the beam up. Energize. Thank <laughs> you.